Good morning. First off, I have to make a quick apology because I haven't made a video for a few days. And the reason for that is that my boy had Friday off and then he had a snow day on Monday, which wasn't scheduled. So I had to spend those two days with him, which was fun. And we had a nice weekend and all the rest of it. But it did mean that I couldn't actually produce any videos. So apologies for that. Or if you hate my videos, maybe you're celebrating. But I'm back today. And what I want to talk about today is something that I covered in other videos in the past as well. I put a video out last year looking at fanboys and I want to talk about that a little bit more today, although I want to take a slightly different approach. I want to come at it from something that I picked up from the skeptics community and that was something called the outsider's test for faith. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically what you do is you look at an issue or you look at something you believe in and then you try and take a step back and look at it in the way that somebody who is an outsider might look at it. So, for instance, I'll give you a quick example here that I thought of, and it would be this. If you think that Muhammad rising up to heaven on a winged horse is silly, take away the horse. How do you feel about that? Now, the reason I say that is because Muhammad supposedly rose to heaven on a horse and Jesus supposedly rose to heaven without a horse. So if you think that Muhammad rising to heaven on a horse is daft, then why would you think that Jesus rising to heaven would be any better? And I don't want to diss anyone's religion here. That's not what this is about. That just serves as an illustration. And what I want to do is I want to try and apply that to video games and video game consoles specifically. For those of you who don't know, I'll just give you a little bit of my own background. And I've, uh, as I say, I've done a video about this before and I'll put a link into that video. So if you want to find out a little bit more about me, then you can go and watch that video. But basically, I came from PC gaming. I did dabble with other forms of gaming, but I came from PC gaming originally. And then I moved over to the Xbox and it was Halo that kind of brought me over to the Xbox because I was into first person shooters back then. And it was the first console that really offered the chance to play first person shooters in a kind of manageable way. So I went from PC gamer to Xbox gamer. And I still, even today, have a preference for the Xbox. And that is mostly historical. It doesn't mean I have a hatred for the PS4. Far from it. I think it's a great console. And I actually think some of the games that are offered on the PS4 are superior to the games that we've had on the Xbox, certainly this generation. It also doesn't mean that I hate the Switch, although some of you might think I do because I've been quite critical of Nintendo. I actually think the Switch has something to offer too. And I think that kind of balanced approach is quite healthy. I think we should be prepared to be critical. But at the same time, I think we should also be prepared to say where we think a console or PC, whatever form it might take, has something to offer. And that's just good sense as far as I'm concerned. But obviously not everybody agrees with me. And often you'll find that people don't seem to apply any logic to their arguments. And we have this situation where like people looking at other people's faith, they see stupidity in the other person's way of looking at things, while they're actually looking at things in a very similar way from their own perspective. And I'll, I'll give you some examples within gaming. Uh, if you look at the advertising for 4K from both the PS4 and the Xbox One. Now, if you think that the PS4 last year overegged the pudding and are still overegging the pudding as regards 4K gaming for the PS4 Pro, then yeah, I'd agree with you. I think that's absolutely right. But by the same token, if you look at the advertising that the Xbox has put out this year, you have to say that they've overdone it. The Xbox One X is not capable of 4K in every game. It does more than the PS4 Pro and it, on the whole, will do it better than the PS4 Pro because of the extra power. But nevertheless, both consoles are guilty of having their advertising push this 4K idea. And let's be absolutely clear here. If you're advertising 4K and your console is upscaling from any resolution to 4K, then 
you're pulling the wool over people's eyes because it is not 4K. And you can put dynamic in front of it, but most people see dynamic and they just think that makes it better because most people don't understand this stuff. They see 4K and that's all they're interested in. So true 4K, dynamic 4K, whatever it might be, people see 4K UHD and they think that that's what they're getting. And, you know, the fact is, years ago, I built a PC that upscaled to 1080p from DVDs and they did look better. They did. They looked a lot better than standard DVD. But nevertheless, they didn't look as good as the Blu-rays I got when they started coming out. And that's because the true 1080p image was better on the whole, if it was engineered properly, than the upscaled version. So both the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X are guilty of using upscaling and then selling it as 4K. And upscaling, regardless of which console's doing it, is not 4K. It's upscaled to 4K. And, you know, most TVs will upscale. And OK, the PS4 or the Xbox One X will do a better job with games because they're designed to do it in a specific way and they use, you know, dynamic resolution and all this kind of stuff. So it will do a better job in games, but nevertheless, it's not 4K unless it is actual 4K or as Xbox are calling it, true 4K. And, and they're saying true 4K when most of the games that they're showing aren't actually true 4K. Neither company is telling the truth. Both companies are pulling the wool over people's eyes because they know that most people haven't got the time or the inclination to find out what these terms actually mean. But then we get other things like, you know, people like me talking about the PS4 and the Xbox One both having too little storage when they were released with 500 gig. And then I go on to say that the Switch hasn't got enough storage with 32 gig. And that to me is a self-evident fact because if the PS4 and the Xbox One don't have enough storage at 500 gig, then the Switch obviously doesn't have enough storage at 32 gig. But the Switch apologists, while they're quite happy to say that the PS4 or the Xbox One didn't have enough storage, when it comes to the Switch, it's a different matter entirely. Because somehow there's a switch goes in their brain and they're not able to see that the argument applies to all the consoles. They're simply not able to apply that outsider test. And what I'm saying here is, please try. Please try and take a step back from your preferences. You can still have your preferences while recognising that there are flaws in your favoured device. It's as simple as that. And OK, look, I know with the Switch it's slightly different because it's portable and all the rest of it, but that nevertheless doesn't take away from the fact that there's very little storage on the Switch and that could be a problem. But then you get PC gamers who go on and on ad infinitum about the idea that the PS4 and the Xbox are underpowered and you can only get true graphical fidelity with the PC. And then those same people turn around and say that the Switch is a viable option, which makes no sense at all to me, unless you're using the argument that it's a portable, in which case you can't compare it against the Xbox and the PlayStation. So again, you need to take a step back. And if you take a step back, then you arrive at the conclusion that all these different devices have something to offer that is separate from the others. And that, to me, is a reasonable position. Yes, the PC's got advantages. Yes, the Xbox has got advantages. Yes, the PS4's got advantages. And yes, the Switch has got advantages. And they all have disadvantages too. And it's just kind of trying to tease that apart and find which is which and then work out what suits you best, surely. Surely? Isn't that the best way to approach these things? But obviously not, because another example would be the PS4 gamers 
who absolutely dismiss backwards compatibility and go on again ad infinitum about what a waste of time it is and how nobody wants backwards compatibility because, well, it seems to me that they're just repeating Sony's marketing position. But at the same time, you'll get the same people saying that PS Now is a great idea. And PS Now, to all intents and purposes, is basically backwards compatibility that you pay for and stream. So it's a lesser service. So in, in that circumstance, again, take a step back. Why would you diss backwards compatibility? Why? If you like PS Now, fine, fill your boots, enjoy PS Now, play those games. But accept that backwards compatibility is a good option for Xbox gamers. It's perfectly reasonable to have those two positions at the same time time. And this is one of the problems as well. People don't seem to be able to understand that they can like what they like, but accept that the guy over there has got something that he likes that is just as good for them. And, you know, there is no problem with that at all. But, you know, obviously there is a problem with all that for some people. And Again, we had last year the Xbox coming out and going on about what a waste of time the PS4 Pro was. What an utter and complete waste of time. Why would anybody want to buy that? And now they've all pre-ordered the Xbox One X and they're all crowing about how much more power it's got. Well, how the hell does that make any sense? OK, the PS4 Pro isn't quite as powerful as the Xbox One X. But when the PS4 Pro was released last year, it was at that point the most powerful console on the market. And why, if you're an Xbox gamer, would you diss a PS4 gamer who wanted to have the most powerful version of their favoured console? Why would you do that? And if we flip it round, why, if you're a PlayStation 4 fan, would you do the same thing about the Xbox fans this year? How does that affect your gaming? If somebody else has got a different console or a different rig or whatever it might be, and they happen to have the most powerful one at this particular time, is that taking away from you enjoying your games? No, of course it's not. Take a step back. Do you enjoy your games? Are your games fun? Do you play with your friends and have a laugh? Is it enjoyable to you? And if that's the case, why the hell does it matter what that guy over there is doing? Why, why is it important to you that you have these bragging rights? And if you haven't got the bragging rights, why do you have to then run down the other guy? You know, and it's, it's not specific to PlayStation fans or Xbox fans or, or Nintendo fans or PC gamers. Every single one of these products has people within the group who don't seem to be able to think clearly. All they seem to be able to do is buy into this investment that they have in this piece of plastic that they own. And that becomes, like I said before, going back to the religious idea, they become like religious zealots. And these bits of plastic are like they're gods that they have to worship. And no one dare suggest that their particular piece of plastic isn't the best piece of plastic on the planet. Heaven forbid. This is how ridiculous it has got. If you're a fanboy, it doesn't matter what the logical argument is. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear that last year the PS4 Pro was the most powerful console on the planet. You don't want to hear this year, if you're a PS4 Pro fan, that the Xbox One X is the most powerful console on the planet. If you're an Xbox fan, you don't want to hear that the PlayStation has currently got better selection of games, which it has, let's be honest, come on. It even comes up in something like loot boxes. You're quite happy to diss EA for their ridiculous shenanigans, but then you'll turn around and defend Shadow of War or defend... I don't know, Forza Motorsport 7 or one of the other games out there that uses loot boxes. 
And, you know, we can go into the details of that and maybe some are more egregious than others. But the fact of the matter is the base idea of loot boxes in a game are a bad idea whether you like the game or not. And frankly, if you like the game and they're bringing loot boxes into it, then that's the game that you should be shouting the loudest about. Just because you like something doesn't mean you should defend everything about it. If you like something, do that thing. Take a step back. Try and look at it with an outsider's viewpoint and see whether if something's wrong in one game and another game is doing a similar thing, if it might not be wrong in that game as well. Use the outsider test. Step back and try and look at it critically. Stop being a bloody apologist. Try and engage your critical faculty. The fact is, if we do that, we're still going to have differences of opinion. There's still going to be areas where we can debate and discuss and have interested and heated arguments. But at least we'll have a chance of going somewhere and, and for the arguments to serve a purpose, other than it all being just one big bloody circle jerk. You can enjoy your gaming without the need to attack other people. You know, just because somebody has a different preference to you, the fact that they might like the PlayStation, or they might like the Xbox, or they might prefer the PC, or they might prefer the Switch, what's it matter to you? Really? And if they prefer a particular game or a particular genre of game to you, again, what does it matter to you if they're not hurting you. And if you can attack something for having, I don't know, loot boxes or whatever it might be that you don't like, then surely, surely it's in your own interest to do that same thing with something you do like. Take a step back, look at your favoured console, look at your favoured game, and try and look at it critically and say, well, if I'm attacking that one over there, if I think there's something wrong with that and they're doing the same thing, maybe there's something wrong here too. Or the other way around. If a game's doing something right and you look at a game on another platform or whatever it might be and, and they're doing something similar, then surely you can say, oh, well, yeah, they're doing something right as well. You know, props to you guys. Well done. You've done something good. It doesn't matter that it might be on the Xbox when you're a PlayStation fan or it's on the PlayStation when you're an Xbox fan or it's a PC game and you don't like PC gaming or the other way around. It doesn't matter, does it? So if Doom comes to the Switch or Wolfenstein comes to the Switch, yeah, we can maybe say, look, you know, it's not going to look as good and all this kind of stuff. That's fine. That's reasonable. But why would we laugh at Switch owners for, for having those games. Surely that's a good thing for those guys to have those games, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing the point somewhere along the line. Maybe we all do want to be at each other's throats. But I thought, you know, just throwing the idea out there, I thought we were all part of the same bloody community. That's what I thought. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you think that we should be trying to apply a little bit more logic to our arguments? Do you think we should be, you know, less inclined to attack the other guy? Or do you think it's all just a bit of fun? I mean, sometimes it is. You know, sometimes a little bit of banter doesn't hurt. I don't know. Sometimes I think it just goes too far. But anyway, that's me done. I'm going to go and grab a cup of tea. Been going on far too long. And I'll uh, speak to you in the next one. Bye.